All right, hello one and all. Today I got a call from the hardest working man in the water utility business, Mr. Mike Brewer, and he had a question for me, and I think I'm going to answer his question in a slightly different way, but basically he was talking about taking information from three cells, let's say account number, name, and zip code, and putting that all in one cell. That's a pretty easy thing to do, and I can see where it is a non-intuitive type of thing to do. You would sort of think it would work one way when, in fact, it works a slightly different way. Um, here's how I would do that. What you're talking about, that's a crazy, crazy function in Excel called concatenate, and that's the craziest, uh, most useless English word I've ever heard in my life. But basically, we're wanting to join those words or join the contents of these cells into one cell. So here's how I'm going to get started. This is the function launcher. It says insert function. We don't know exactly what function we want to use there, but here's how I'm going to look for it. I click on that, and then this helps us find the function that we would need. Here it says type a brief description of what you want to do. Well, through trial and error, I found the key word there is join. I'm trying to join some text. I'll type in join text. I'm going to tell it to go and find me a function. It says if you're wanting to join stuff, concatenate or indirect is your best bet. And my, since I have concatenate highlighted, down here it says join several text strings into one text string. That sounds good. Let's just see what indirect is. Returns the reference specified by a text string. That sounds very confusing and I don't want to try that. So let's go with concatenate and I'll say OK. All right. Here it is asking for... Uh, text 1, text 2, or 1 to 30 text strings that can be joined. I'm just going to tell you this first box is asking for the first string of text that we want to join. Well, I want it to grab this account number. All right. Then I want it to grab, in the next group of text, I want it to be the name. Then in the next group of text, I want it to be the zip code. All right. So now it is going to concatenate those three cells. Let's hit an OK. And that's just what it did. It has the account number, then it has bill, and then it has this zip code in here. Now if I don't like that, if I would like to have a space between each one of these groups of information, we can do that too. So let's launch the dialog launcher again. And here instead of putting the contents of B2, which is this guy's name, let's put a blank in there. Actually, let me cancel that right for the moment. I'm going to show you that right now that cell is totally blank. There are no characters in that at all. And the way I know that is I can determine the length of characters that are in here using a function called equal L E N and I want the length of that cell. If I hit enter, it says there are no characters in this cell. But if I press spacebar and press enter, now we know there's one character inside that, and it is the space uh, character. All right, so I'll show you why I'm going to do that now. We'll go back to this cell, and we're going to hit the insert function button. All right, I don't want B2 next, so I'll highlight that. And what I really want instead of B2 is a blank. My blank is in cell E2. So I'm going to click that. Now here I'd like to have, instead of C2, I'd like to have B2, which is the name. Here I want another blank. I click there. And then I want to finish it up by having the zip code. So now I have it to concatenate whatever is in A2 which is this account number, whatever is in E2, which is this blank, whatever is in B2, which is that name, here we see it's built, then in the next thing I want to join to that is the contents of E2, which again is a blank, and then we'll finish it off with whatever is in C2, which is this zip code. All right, I'm going to give it an OK, and now that's a little more legible. So that is a good way to get the contents of three cells all into one cell. Like any other function or formula, all I have to do now is float on the fill handle, double-click it, and it brings it right on down. 
Oh, I see the problem here. Um, what I need to do, this is now referencing the cell E3. I need it to always reference cell E2. So let's back out of that. I'm going to control Z to undo what I just did. All right, and then we'll relaunch our function. Everywhere we have E2, we need to make sure that this reference doesn't creep down. We want to make sure that that always references E2, not E3, then E4, then E5, the way that formulas normally do. And we can make this an absolute reference by pressing the F4 button on your keyboard. So see how that, knock, that uh, locks that in with the dollar signs? I'll come down here and press F4 again, so that's lock that in place. So our reference won't wander down the page. Just give it an OK. And now then, double-click and send this down, and we have spaces all the way down. Earlier, Mike was talking about maybe uh, merging some cells. Really, you don't have to merge cells, because we can make this as wide as you need to. So if this was a really long name, and if this name changes, uh, for example, let me double click in there and I'll press space J O N E S, press enter, and now then that updated. Now, if this was never going to change the name that we have over here, what we can do is select this and then right click on the border. I'm going to move this right over here. So I'm going to right click on the border and drag it over and now let go. And now we have some choices. We can move it there, we can copy it there, but what we want to do is copy this as values. Right now, this information over here is being represented because of a function or a formula, but we want to do away with the function. We want to throw it away and only keep the values that this function represents. So I'm going to say copy here as values only. And so now, this is no longer a function, as you can see up in the formula bar. This is just a value. And so we can select these cells, hit delete on the keyboard, and now we've got everything in one cell. Alright Mike, I'm going to throw the ball back to you and you can tell me if that helps you or if you have a different thing that you need to do. See you later.